Hello! The old school RuneScape team have released a new dev blog, Bounty Hunter Rewards Part 2. So, since the last dev blog, they've been inundated with suggestions, questions and feedback surrounding their proposed rewards for using the Bounty Hunter target system. The feedback has been great and they've received some valuable insight and suggestions that have since been collated and huddled together in preparation for another proposal. To make sure you understand exactly how these rewards will be coming into old school, watch my dev blog video here as it goes into detail about how the system will work. So first of all, the PvP star. In the last dev blog they outlined that they didn't really know what was suitable to go in the store. They've made it clear that supplies such as food and potions were off the list because they didn't want to undermine various collections of communities and skills in the wider game. And we agreed with them and suggested alternatives that would enhance not only your PvP experience but the aspects of the wider game as well. So here are the proposal for the items going into the PvP store. Keep in mind they intend to keep the rewards from Bounty Hunter tradable. So items from other shops. Devaluing the efforts of skillers and PVMers is something that they're set on avoiding with Bounty Hunter Reward Shop. In fact, they hope that many of the rewards will bring more value to items in those areas of the game. One way to give emblems value without negatively impacting PVMers or skillers is to stock the Bounty Hunter Reward Shop with a number of items that have already come from various shops around old school. For example, this will be Dragon Scimitars, Dragon Daggers and Berserker Helmets. These items come almost exclusively from other shops in-game, and because of this it will provide value to the emblems received from Bounty Hunter without hurting other PVMers or skillers. Next is the Saradomans tier. The Saradoman sword has always been a contender with the Abyssal Whip up until the release of the Kraken. The Abyssal Tentacle is one step ahead of the Saradoman sword in terms of offensive bonuses. The Saradomans tier would even up the playing field. When used on a Saradomen sword, it will create a blessed Saradomen sword. The blessed Saradomen sword would give additional stats to make it comparable to the Abyssal Tentacle, as well as allowing the sword to poison your opponent. After 10,000 hits with the blessed sword, the Saradomen sword is consumed and the player is left with the Saradomen tier. Next we've got the Dragon Spike. Dragon Spikes provide something that players have been asking to get for quite some time. Dragon Defenders. When used on a rune defender, the dragon spike will upgrade it to a dragon defender. The dragon defender would provide slightly better stats than the rune defender and, if lost, will revert back to a rune defender. Obviously it's an interesting way to get the dragon defender into the game, although as a non-PKer's point of view, I would not like to be forced into PKing to get it. Next the clue box. Many players have experienced the horrible moment where you are on the last step of a hard clue and get PK'd on your way to a wilderness clue location. The clue box will guarantee that you keep your clue scroll on death and the clue box itself would always be lost. Next, the smite scroll or the amulet of smithing. When used on an amulet of glory, the smite scroll will create an amulet of smithing. The amulet of smithing provides the same stats as an amulet of glory as well as increasing the effectiveness of the smite prayer. Instead of lowering your opponent's prayer by a quarter of damage dealt, Smite would instead drain one third of damage dealt. This item would be degradable and would crumble to dust after being worn for a certain number of hits. That seems like an interesting idea. I wonder if it will still have the teleports the glory has. The Ring of Wealth imbued. The Ring of Wealth I doubles the chances of you receiving a clue scroll from all monsters within the wilderness. In order to imbue the ring, a player must pay 50,000 coins as well as a number of bounty hunter points. When a player dies to another player risking a ring of wealth I, the ring will crumble to dust and 50,000 coins paid to imbue it will be dropped. Next, the magic shortbow imbued. Another imbue that the light offer is for the magic shortbow. The magic shortbow I would have its special attack cost lowered by 5% bringing the special attack cost to 50%. The imbue will be applied using a scroll purchase from Bounty Hunter Reward Shop that could be traded with other players. On death, the Magic Shortbow I would revert back to its Magic Shortbow form. Next are Dark Vessels and Souls. Dark Vessels and Souls are two rewards that will be offered that will work together. The Dark Vessel will be used to store souls that, when released, cause any monsters that are attacking you to flee. The Dark Vessel can only be used in the wilderness and does not degrade. When a soul is released, it is lost. The Ring of Influence The Ring of Influence increases the likelihood of special effects on enchanted bolt activating. It degrades after 100 bolts have activated when worn and provides no other stats. Next, the Cosmetic Upgrades. They can offer cosmetic upgrades to some items as rewards from the Bounty Hunter Shop. 
They don't have much of examples, but here are a couple that Mod Alpha whipped up for this dev blog. So obviously here we've got a dragon scimitar with a relatively long handle and a whip which looks like it's got lava textures on it. Other possible rewards they want to offer are teleport controllers. Allows you to control which obelisk you are teleported to instead of ending up at a random one every time. But this will always be lost on death. Ancient teleport tablets. New teleport tablets to take you to the locations available on the ancient spellbook. I think I prefer the ability to unlock them from a player and house rather than from a PK store. Target and rage. Increases the level range upwards of potential targets you can be assigned. Which means the target you get from the bounty hunter target system will be a higher level range. The looting bag. If you don't fancy a trip to go out and get one as a drop, you can buy one from the reward shop. And the rune pouch. Allows a player to store three different types of runes in a single inventory slot. The runes can be used when in the pouch. If I'm honest, I'm not too keen on the rune pouch. There's not really many spells where you have more than three runes out anyway. So, accolades and emblems. Accolades. These have seemingly gone down well, and they've had one point raised as feedback over how the system should work. None of the accolade challenges shall be made to target skillers or specific classes of players in the wilderness. The community feels pretty strongly about this, and through feedback they agree. Top key cares and riskers have pointed out that getting 3 kills within 10 seconds to score a triple kill is highly unlikely. They agree, so they'll adjust the time between each kill to score a different medal to something more appropriate based on further feedback. So please give them feedback. And finally emblems. They initially proposed to make the lowest tier of emblems tradable to allow players to buy into an emblem upgrade kill streak. They would still like this to be the case, however concerns over players hoarding and buying their way into the store have been quite plentiful. All emblems are to have a street value based off the number of reward points they can be exchanged for. This should offset the value of the items coming out of the store. Supply and demand should keep the emblem turnover consistent enough to retain reward shop value. The way I see it is, PKers can get these emblem drops, which they can either use in this PK shop or sell to non-PKers. This will allow PKers to get slightly better advantages in PvP and actually gain some money. Non-PKers can obviously buy the emblems from the PKers and spend it in the PK shop. I like most of the ideas for the PK shop, although as a non-PKer there's not too much I want from that shop, which removes any incentive for me to actually buy emblems from PKers. Either way it's an interesting idea, and I hope they pull each item from this PK shop separately, simply for the fact that some of the items I feel are a bit powerful, some of them are pretty good. So if you've enjoyed this video please like and share and if you want to keep up to date with old school runescapes, updates, dev blogs and polls please subscribe. I've been Lewis, thanks for watching, goodbye.